well once a nation is spoiled it is spoiled and we got the full communist technocratic system in place and uh, tribulation Hi, my name is Sandy Steele, James Alexander, John Steele. Uh, we're in front of Magist the Magistrates Court, Chocolate Magistrates Court, uh, today, 28th of uh, July uh, 2015. Uh, I uh, have been summoned here unlawfully to, uh, because I've been withholding council tax, because I have evidence and I have a video which I'll show you, video link, uh, that the uh, party politicians are uh, co comprehensively cartel frauding our elections and there is a ref there's, a, there's a relativity proportionality in common law uh, uh, with regard to taxation and representation if your representatives are illegal obviously and you know that or unlawful criminal therefore you shouldn't pay tax to them and i know and i've got the evidence so we're going to go into court and we're going to try and deliver uh, if, if they resist and try and deny us a uh, common law jury trial we were going to deliver notices of Notice of treason and harassment under sections 39 and 40 of Magna Carta 1215, sections attached, also under both previous and subsequent common law precedents. Also notice of both requirements and charges there too. Well, this is someone else who knows their rights, and even the police, it seems, uh, are very interested in uh, what's going on these days um, as people try to, you know, exercise justice, which they're not getting any. your guests you can talk to any one of us but we're certainly not going to tell you our names why not come sit down it's fine just wait for mr juror right? because there's what requirement do i have to give you my name well i know your name every step of the way you're going to have to break down which statutory act you're acting under i will then jot them down i will then look them up if i find you haven't stuck to the word on these statutory acts i will then come after you and sue you and if you don't think i'm capable of that i suggest you go talk to simon Wiles at the council who's currently being sued by me and also the police and also barclays bank so so you understand i don't mess around the council are doing some of the most corrupt stuff under god's own earth and you come here and talk to me about an obscenity I've scrawled on their letters threatening imprisonment if we don't hand over our hard-earned cash. Yet when I ask them, where do you spend this hard-earned cash, do you know what they say? No. We don't know. We haven't got a clue. We can't possibly tell you that. So when I ask them why there's three million sitting in an Icelandic bank account, do you know what I get? Oh, we got that money back when the bank collapsed. When I say to them, why do you hire the magistrate's court on a Monday morning? And I've got evidence of this. They go to me, we do no such thing. I say, why are you breaching the Justices Act 1944 by hiring a courtroom, sitting your own staff in it, calling people to it and not telling them? We do no such thing. Can you show me the liability orders? Oh, we don't have them. The Magistrate Court's got them. So I ring up the Magistrate's Court requesting liability orders and you know what they said to me? It's council business. So when two policemen turn up at my door and say to me, you have sworn on a piece of paper. I say to them, Halsbury's law clearly Snows. states. Snows. You don't say that you're saying to us, aren't you? I'm, I'm trying to explain where I'm coming from. Oh, okay. Halsbury's law states that administration courts, this includes crown courts, magistrates' courts, county courts, have no power. Now, Halsbury's law, look it up, please. It clearly states this. So when this council who breaches every rule known to man by hiring the court themselves, in, instigating their own summons, sending out their own liability orders, which are perjured and fraudulent, hiring courtrooms, doing all of that. They're breaking not only the Justices Act 1944, not only are they breaching Halsbury's law, they have no standing. They are completing com total and complete fraud to a degree I cannot even describe to you. When I spoke to your family yesterday, they were a bit concerned that you might have some mental health issues. <laughs> Who did you speak to? I spoke, I spoke to the lady here yesterday, and is it your brother? That's because you scared them. No, they're a bit worried about you. No, you scared um, them. No, no, they were fine yesterday. I fight the system, that's what I do. Trust me, if you're worried about me, that's a damn good sign, my friend. Okay. Because I don't comply. Let me show, let me show you. And I do not listen to what you're going to now say to me when I say to you, councillors are raping and pillaging and taking from people that are committing yeah. suicide over bedroom tax, that are homeless because they can't afford to live in their own homes. 100,000 old people died last year. Do the council give a shit? No. 
They want their tax. Nicola, Nicola, we're not too here to talk to you. You will get lectured. You've come here about a swear word I put on a piece of paper. I'm not interested in any statutory law. I don't care whether I've breached one or not. Do you understand? Because the laws they are breaking surpass anything I could fathomably do. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? So when two policemen turn up here, when I could point you in the direction of 20 million paedophiles sitting in the House of Commons and say to you, go do your fucking job over there, and you come here because I wrote an obscenity on a piece of paper and some dickhead in council's got rattled. Do you see where I'm coming from? Do you grasp where I'm coming from? And you come and tell me I'm insane. No, I'm not saying you're insane. At all, I think. Do you understand how passionate I am about this corruption we live under? I think I've met, met lots of people like you, Nicola. I think, unfortunately... I mean, when they gave you this, did you not say, well, yeah, the council are co committing a lot of corruption and stuff. It's all in collusion with the courts and the police, so everyone's covering their, each other's do backs. To, do you just want to take a picture of this, then, that you sent? I've already put film. them all over Facebook. Oh, no. Here you go, if you're going to put a film on. Everybody! who's been watching this or listening to this on YouTube and Facebook, these are the things I have blatantly put all over the internet. This is what I do to people who demand money from me under threat of imprisonment, who put a gun to my head and tell me they will bang me up. This is what I do. I openly admit it. This is what I do. There you go. Okay. And your names? I'm Peter Norman, Superintendent from South Yorkshire Police. And you? I'm Carl Baroon from South Yorkshire Police, PC. You'll be on Facebook and YouTube, so okay. I do have a lot of followers, so you'll be quite famous after this point. Famous or influence? Pick your choice. Okay. But the reason why we've come, Nicola, seriously, is clearly if you've got an issue, if you've got a point. I do. Then, yeah, you have, have to, to you have to you yeah. have to remember the fact this is not a recent thing. This started five years ago when I kindly right. asked Simon Wars and David Forster at the council. Please. Shall we just tell me. So please tell me. <laughs> Kindly explain to me where my council tax is going, where my parents' council tax is going, what we're all paying for, what people are paying for. Stick it on there, let me... Indeed. So I asked them this what did five say? years ago. I can show you the emails I got because I actually printed them all out. They didn't have anything to tell me. Right. So we broke it down. I said, okay, three fifty public services, three hundred onto pension, council workers' pensions. The remainder, where's it going? No, nothing. So I said, okay, fine, you can't tell me, I'm not paying you. That Did was you my premise. Did you get a copy of the accounts or? They, they won't give me anything. Like I've asked for expense accounts, I've asked for audits, I've just recently done a freedom of information request, which has come back saying they won't do it. Right. So now I've got to resubmit it in three freedom of information requests. Yeah, I was going to say, for why. So I've story. got to go and do all that, I've done SARS, I've right. done it all. Trust me, I'm not a stupid person, I know when to get information, how to get information. So I've done it all. Simon Wiles and anyone else at Doncaster Council were made clear time ago, politely, in civil letters, and I wrote civil letters for three years, they would not stop harassing us and threatening us with imprisonment for not paying them taxes that they couldn't tell us where they were going. Which, which taxes is it that you've not been Council paying? Council tax. Right. Which isn't even a tax. If you actually look at the definition of the word tax, it's not a tax. What so. It's just a, a local authority that's basically ripping people. Like it's like a mafia racket. It's a like charge. protection racket. Yeah. Right. It's not a tax. It can't even come classed under that, but yet they call it that. Then I even went to them about the 92 council tax enforcement regulations and said, I read them word for word. Nowhere does it say anyone has legal obligation to pay council tax. So then I went back with that and said, can you just show me which paragraph, which section it says I must pay you? Are you interested to know that you don't actually have to pay it? I'm interested in yeah. yeah. right. right, so now go read the night. Whenever you go anywhere with council tax, they'll always come out with the same thing. Council tax regulations and enforcement from 92. They're the ones they always go back to. Right. Go read that. Now, when you read that, you're going to be very interested to find out. It says nothing in there about your obligation to pay it, but there's a hell of a lot written in that about the council's right, supposedly legally, to enforce it. So essentially, they can force it, force it, force it, force it, until they break you and you hand it over. But you don't have to hand it over. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's a battle of wills. Who's going to win out? Right. So how long have you not been paying the council tax for? Then? For the four or five years since I never got a reply to where the money goes. Right. So you like subject to enforcement action at the moment then? Is that why? No, we get letters, threats oh, and right. letters, and then we get the constant liability orders have been granted at Magistrate's Court. Right. We get the arrest warnings have been granted, arrest demands or no committal warrants we get all of that so every time i get a letter i write back and say yes thank you could you just send me the committal warrant 
should be signed stamped wet ink signature and I should be able to read the magistrate's name in it so I can verify these documents yeah I mean this is law to this woman speaking of and uh, you know this includes uh, bus lane parking tickets and stuff like this which uh, in Britain uh, it's, it's down as a criminal offence I think to be in a bus lane which is not it's not a criminal offence <laughs> and yet even if they, they try to enforce it they must have a magistrate or a, a, a high court judge's signature in order to uh, get funds from a bank but it just seems that now the banks the police everyone is just uh, working together in this communist dictatorship that we stay in no wonder the Muslims want to take over uh, Luton and it's a very lucrative business uh, being in the, the council I can verify these documents I never ever once have received a legitimate document out of court or council that bears any resemblance to something that remotely is lawful never once and that's five years of this right and now i have compiled a dossier on wiles and roger harvey right which are the two people i'm currently dealing with in the council right. and when i've amassed enough information and bring it to the police are the police going to act on any of this because trust think, it's not just happening here it's happening countrywide i mean the thing with the police is that we deal obviously with the criminal law and law they're law. breaking criminal law yeah but again ultimately what you're taught and i don't disagree with you in theory but the councils act generally within the civil law don't they yeah but there's they're not allowed to issue their own summons no yeah i appreciate that but they, but yeah, again, they do but that's something that, that we have no dealings with in terms of the police but they're breaking the law just yeah, as exactly so they can't issue their own right, summons i appreciate that but ultimately that would be dealt with civilly by the civil judges have you had got a solicitor involved or you saw it i don't trust solicitors solicitors work for the bar right i mean Prostitutes solicit themselves, but at least they charge an honest wage for it. What do solicitors do? They're the worst. Right. Have you ever used a solicitor? Never will. Use if I can't do it myself, I won't. I won't hire a solicitor. I just won't do it. Right. Simple okay. as that. Anything they can learn, I can go out and learn. So have you received any summonses then to go before the magistrates court for you know? Um, not any or... summons from magistrates court. Yes, I've received plenty of summons from the council. <laughs> Pretending to be from Magistrates Court, that's what you're referring to. You, any of them. Have you replied to them then? Um, old days, civil letters. New days, go fuck yourself. Do you think that's appropriate? Oh my god. Let's go just for one second. Remember, remember, we're policemen. Let's just go. Yeah, we're not sat around the You know what we? gets me is the amount of suffering and pain in this world and the amount of things our countries, the Western governments, the USA, in UK and Russia supplying arms to all these third world countries who are killing themselves because we're supposedly the people here are getting rich off these arms deals. Now, when people say to me, you blasphemed or you've used an expletive, and I just look at them and think, and that's the worst of your worries. Our world is going to hell in a handbasket due to this greed of this 1% that are controlling 99% of the world's resources. So when I swear an effing blind you yeah, and someone brings me up on it, I honestly say the Rotherham paedophile scandal, the Doncaster paedophile scandal, which will come out, trust me. It's just a matter of time. Every council is being shown up for what they've covered up. Right. It's a matter of time. And so forgive me if I don't understand when you say to me, is it appropriate? Nothing's appropriate. Nothing is appropriate. It's not appropriate that that 80 year old killed herself because she couldn't afford a bedroom tax. And the council didn't give a shit. That's not appropriate. It's not appropriate. I've got friends who are homeless now because they can't afford to pay rent. It's not appropriate. I've got other friends stood at food banks. It's not appropriate. So trust me, swearing Do you, do you think that's is, the appropriate way to deal with your, your it history is, with them? Or? It is appropriate now, because now I don't give a shit, as you can possibly see by my attitude. I'm not afraid of anything. I couldn't care less if you arrested me, though you won't, because I know my ins and outs and probable cause and the rest of it. I don't care if you take and put me into jail. I'm not afraid. Do you understand? I have nothing to lose other than to gain my freedom. That's yeah, it. I mean, from our perspective, I mean, I can see you're passionate and that you've done some research and things. And again, I'm, I'm not, not belittling you, but there's the civil law and there's the criminal law. The way I look at it, if and justice is act as law yeah, and it's broken, it's criminal. I appreciate that, but we as police officers, 
we learn and we understand the criminal law and, and things like the public order act are sort of the day-to-day -day things that we deal with and you may feel that you haven't broken any law because you're fighting a, a battle aren't you in terms of you know what, what you think you is think i'm wrong. fighting a battle believe you me i want to live my life peacefully they keep bringing it right that's all i want does do i not as a human being on this planet earth deserve to live my life peacefully yeah, we all want that, don't we? So why do they keep bringing it to me? I think they'll see it is that you've not Pay your way! A... Pay your dues! Yeah, yeah. Yet when I say my dues ain't going where you're saying they're going, mate, here's the here's the crux. This is the crux, yeah? This is, Forget everything else, yeah? This is the crux. Westminster, where all the oligarchs live, where all the flipping MPs and all the rich folk live, pay the same council tax as a slot. What does that tell you? Well, there's different bandings, isn't there? No, bollocks, they're band H. That's <coughs> right. mansion tax. Right. You tell me why mansion tax, band H, in Westminster are paying 1100 to 1400 a year in council tax. Okay, I don't know. I'm just a policeman, Nicky. Hazard a guess. I don't know. Nicky, if, if we talk about this then, if you're sending offensive letters to people... You they're not offensive. They're offensive what they're sending let, let me, to me, love. What can you do? Tell me, what can you do? You commit offences on the miscellaneous... What can you do? Act. Right, okay. Order out. You're offending people. Right. It's not a proper way to deal with your dispute with the council, is it? Okay. Do you agree? Right, well, now I'm suing them, so now that is appropriate. Right. But do you think it's all right to be sending offensive emails and letters to the council? In that, in that they're the obviously you affected just, you by it. Do you think it's all right? They're obviously affected by it, right? I think, Nikki, it's because the people that you write to, they are the ones that open these. these, these they are... all work there. Yeah, but it's just it's people that have got jobs, Nikki. It's, it's, uh, excuse it's me, they said in... that at Nuremberg and they shot no, them all no, up. No, 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 shot them all. Yeah, the we, we don't 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 if anyone's capable of critical thought, yeah, they no longer have that. I'm just doing my job. They're opening letters. They're providing for their families. And well, then maybe they should wake up. And stuff, and... I wouldn't commit an immoral act to provide for my family or anyone else. I wouldn't do it. They won't I'd see go, it. go on the street and starve myself to death before I hurt another human being, right. or made demands, or okay. acted like a mafia. But Nikki, there are lots of people that are just basically working to provide for the family, and it's the people who are opening these letters that get offended. But they're the well. same people that send them out. I don't know that. You don't know. One big oh for the council. They must have been really hot. I swear, were they? Yeah, these policemen are. <clears throat> I I can hazard a guess. I hope it upsets everyone along the chain. The people who open them go to their superiors or line managers, they go to their superiors. Well, to further prove we're living in a fascist, Nazi, communist, technocratic regime. This is a letter I sent to Glasgow City Council. Yeah. yeah. And Hitler, of course, represents the city councils of Britain. You know, Britain Britain uh, was uh, the first nation, I think, that started the Nazi death camps down in South Africa. This is where Hitler got his idea for this. And he was uh, very fascinated with uh, the British Empire. Took a lot of his ideals from it. But, of course, uh, you know, you got to look to Switzerland and... Uh, how that whole thing is uh, nested there um, within Europe, not within the EU, but within within Switzerland. We can look at Kim Jong Un as well, which I'll post a video as well about him, which uh, Sean Ross did a couple of years ago. Hitler quotes a decision of the Führer in the express form of a law or decree may not be scrutinized by a judge. In addition, the judge is bound by any other decision of the Führer provided that they are clearly intended to declare law. And it's not true law. It's not common law. You know, you got, you, you're getting cameras everywhere, um, charges um, all the time when you're out on the road. And uh, the government obviously decided this. And what they're saying is no judge, no judge can overturn this sort of technocratic uh, dictatorship that we have in place right now except common law yes should still work doesn't matter if they're changing statutes and legal man-made laws common law supersedes overall and so yeah I will be suing Glasgow City Council 
I will be suing anyone who is unlawfully taking money from my account or taking my property as a man. And so I have no contract with Glasgow City Council um, or your local council. You have no assured liability. There's no international treaty and no consent has been given for any monies to be taken from or any property to be taken from any of us by Glasgow City Council or anyone else. Um, so I laid down some charges as well which obviously now the 28 days have passed so they have uh, had time to pay it but they haven't so the charges are going to go up now. Sing up if you know the words. <laughs> Nations was the money cartel's first attempt at world control, but Tsar Nicholas II of Russia caught on to their plot and sabotaged it. That proved to be a deadly mistake. Schiff, Warburg, Rockefeller, Harriman, and Morgan backed the uprisings that led to the 1917 Russian Revolution. Their strategy was to finance both sides of wars and revolutions, which gave them control over the winners, the losers, and the outcome. Between 1918 and 1921, 14 million Russians died from war and starvation under Lenin's Bolsheviks. By 1919, Lenin ran up a national debt to the Rothschild banksters of $60 billion, which put Russia firmly under their control. As Mayor Rothschild once said, give me control of a nation's money and I care not who makes her laws. To this day, the Rothschilds have stopped the heirs to the Tsar's fortunes from claiming their deposits held in Rothschild banks. Those fortunes are now worth an estimated $50 billion. Joseph Stalin, who was financed by the same money cartel, replaced Lenin as Russia's brutal new dictator. Using terror and death threats, Stalin's job was to industrialize Russia and turn communism into a powerful counterforce to democracy. Manufactured conflicts between these two powerful political forces would be the ideal excuse for all future wars and for dividing, conquering, and ruling the world. But profits were not the only motive. There was also revenge. The money changers never forgave the czars for their support of Lincoln during the Civil War. Also, Russia was the last major European nation to refuse to give in to the privately owned central bank scheme. Three years after World War I broke out, the Russian Revolution toppled the czar and installed the scourge of communism. Jacob Schiff of Kuhn Loeb and Company bragged from his deathbed that he had spent $20 million towards the defeat of the Tsar. Money was funneled from England to support the revolution as well. Why would some of the richest men in the world financially back communism, the system that was openly vowing to destroy the so-called capitalism that made them wealthy? what you got to understand <clears throat> even though they're quoting about the financial elite um, in this section they don't tell you the spiritual powers behind this and this is very much the Vatican is a communist dictatorship, a communist government if you like as well um, and they are manipulating a lot of these um, political things which are happening even though that um, you know the Jewish bankers are very much highlighted um, but they're not true Jews synagogue is saved in Jews researcher Gary Allen explained it this way 
if one understands that socialism is not a share of the wealth program, but is in reality a method to consolidate and control the wealth, then the seeming paradox of super rich men promoting socialism becomes no paradox at all. Instead, it becomes logical, even the perfect tool of power-seeking megalomaniacs. Communism, or more accurately socialism, is not a movement of the downtrodden masses, but of the economic elite. As W. Cleon Skousen put it in his 1970 book, The Naked Capitalist, Power from any source tends to create an appetite for additional power. It was almost inevitable that the super-rich would one day aspire to control not only their own wealth, but the wealth of the whole world. To achieve this, they were perfectly willing to feed the ambitions of the power-hungry political conspirators who were committed to the overthrow of all existing governments and the establishments of a central worldwide dictatorship. But what if these revolutionaries get out of control and try to seize power from the super-rich? After all, it was Mao Zedong who in 1938 stated his position concerning power. Political power grows out of the barrel of a gun. The Wall Street, London Axis elected to take the risk. The master planners attempted to control revolutionary communist groups by feeding them vast quantities of money when they obeyed and contracting their money supply or even financing their opposition if they got out of control. Lenin began to understand that although he was the absolute dictator of the new Soviet Union, he was not pulling the financial strings. Someone else was silently in control. The state does not function as we desired. The car does not obey. A man is at the wheel and seems to lead it but the car does not drive in the desired direction. It moves as another force wishes. Cool. Finally here, uh, just thought I'd look at this article. Um, apparently, there is more people, I believe, in North Korea than there is in Scotland. And yet, 30,000 people reported missing in Scotland every year. And so that's what happens only in communist dictatorships. Only in communist dictatorships. Makes you sick, doesn't it? The Star Trek guy. Only in communist dictatorships does this happen. People disappearing and, you know... It's just, it's just communist. It's just totally communist. And we actually found the Loch Ness Monster. This is what it could actually be. It's a sturgeon. That's what it, size of it when it's a baby. That's about the average size of one, but it does grow a lot, a lot bigger. Seven or eight feet in some cases sometimes even even bigger and this chappy looks about seven feet now so this could be the real Loch Ness monster and when she's shape-shifted back to her original form there she is 